expectant crowd of over 70,000 filled the pasture. All eyes were on the three shepherd children, waiting for them to summon a sign from God. It's the only time in the history of Christianity that messages announced in advance a miracle. Incredible vision that stunned thousands. My parish priest was there, and he said that the sun detached from the sky and came down towards him. He threw himself on the ground, convinced he was going to die. Then suddenly one heard a clamor, a cry of anguish breaking from all the people. The sun, whirling wildly, seemed all at once to loosen itself from the firmament, and blood red advanced threateningly upon the earth as if to crush us with its huge and fiery weight. The sun was whirling round and round with intense movements and different colors, looking like it is going to fall onto you. Fatima, Portugal is one of Catholicism's most sacred sites. Each year, millions of people come to the Basilica, known as the Sanctuary of Fatima, to pray to the Virgin Mary and to pay homage to the shepherd children of Fatima. It was May 1917, and World War I was devastating Europe. Far from the battlefields, in the tiny village of Fatima, Portugal, three young shepherds, nine-year-old Francisco Marto, his eight-year-old sister Jacinta, and their 11-year-old cousin Lucia da Santuche, were tending their flock when a vision appeared. A beautiful woman bathed in brilliant white light. Father Christianu, a local historian, tells their story. On the 13th of May, Our Lady appears to the children. She doesn't identify herself to them, but the children truly think she was the Virgin Mary. The apparition told them they must return to this very spot on the 13th of each month for six months, during which time she would reveal the purpose of her visitations. Though very young, the three little shepherds were touched by the message they received from the lady. The Virgin Mary instructed them to tell no one about her visit, but Jacinta, the youngest, could not hold back. When she arrived home that day, Jacinta says, Oh, Mother, today I saw Our Lady. It was difficult at first for people to accept that the apparitions were true. The first to doubt them was Lucia's mother. When she heard about it, she became very upset, and she even punished her own daughter, Lucia. The same held true for Jacinta and Francisco's mother. According to their brother, João Martu, in possibly the last interview given before his death in May 2000, he recalls what happened. Our mother scolded them. She said, what kind of good saints are you to see Our Lady? And my father used to say, let it be, woman. Great is the power of God. Compelled by their vision, the three children returned to the pasture the next month as the Virgin Mary requested. Word of the divine apparitions was dividing the community. Some vilified the children as blasphemers. During that time, there were people who threatened them, saying that they would punish them. In those times, if someone asked if I belonged to Jacinta and Francisco's family, I would just say, me? No! because I was afraid that they would also punish me. And yet, still others revered the children as saints. Month after month, the curious crowds grew, placing the children in the center of a vicious struggle for power. Government officials became alarmed at the town's growing religious allegiance and saw the children as a threat to their domination over the church. The mayor declared himself against the apparitions and tried by all possible means to stop people from joining in. But it became impossible. It wasn't possible to stop the crowds that were continuing to grow. The crowds concerned the church as well. Monsignor Geha, director of the Basilica, explains. The church had to be very careful, even though it was children, because children can be manipulated or even have delusions. With apparitions of supernatural phenomena, we might believe that the person could be mistaken or that they are perpetrating a fraud. 
The local priest disputing the apparitions threatened the children with eternal damnation, but they would not admit their lies. But the children were steadfast. They insisted that they were seeing and speaking with the Virgin Mary. On the third visit of July 13th, the Virgin Mary gave them a message which had to remain a secret. The message of the so-called secret consisted of three parts. After the Virgin asked them if they were willing to accept the sacrifices that God wanted to send them, Our Lady then showed the secret's first part, a vision of hell. In her published memoirs, Lucia describes the vision. Our Lady showed us a great sea of fire. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls in human form, all blackened or burnished bronze, floating around in the conflagration. The Virgin Mary's message continued with the second part of the secret. This war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. The papacy of Pius XI began in 1922 and extended into the year 1939. During this time, Hitler came to power and Japan invaded China. These were the sparks that ignited World War II, just as the Virgin Mary had predicted. The second part also included the announcement of the Virgin. To prevent this, I shall come to request the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart. If you do what I ask, people shall have peace. Otherwise, Russia shall spread its mistakes. The children had never heard the name Russia before. They thought it was a wicked woman in need of conversion. Of course, Russia was at that time involved in a dramatic communist revolution, which had banned religious devotion. James Hardiman, former skeptic and Fatima novelist, now sees a clear and prophetic connection between the children's message and global events. Mary said that Russia would spread its evils all over the world and entire countries would cease to exist and of course that happened they vanished behind the Iron Curtain but then Mary also prophesied that this could be reversed by consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in 1984, the Pope's call for atheist Russia's return to God would coincide with Mikhail Gorbachev's rise to power. Four years later, Gorbachev would become the first Russian president to meet with the Pope, just as the Soviet Union began its rapid disintegration. It now appears that this sequence of events was predicted by the children of Fatima. Fatima is the only time in the history of the world that Current events, current affairs, political substance has been included in the messages of Mary. It seems now that the two secrets predicted three cataclysmic events, the rise of communism, World War II, and the end of the Soviet Union. But the children told of a third secret, and Mary's order that they keep it to themselves. The responsibility for that third secret would subject the children to terrible threats and stretch their courage to the breaking point. But the thought of a divine message being kept secret, particularly by three young children, did not sit well with authorities. On August 13th, the local administrator, Arturo de Oliveira Santouche, kidnapped the three children on their way to meet the Virgin Mary. He hoped to disappoint the crowds who had gathered. He also wanted to learn the final secret. On the 13th of August, the mayor of this region, who was a very bad man and completely against the church, came here full of power and took them. He kept them there on the 13th and 14th and on the 15th. He thought that if they weren't there at the field by the time of the apparitions, that all this matter would end. So he kept them locked up. In an effort to learn the secret, the administrator threatened to boil each of them in oil, but the three children courageously maintained their silence. What's really amazing to me is the children's sincerity, because the children must have really, really been convinced of the reality of God. I think this is the most moving thing, especially because they were children. When the children were finally released, they immediately returned to the pasture. 
the Virgin Mary again appeared. Jacinta and Francisco's brother, João Martu, gives his first-hand account of that day's events. They were facing an oak, and Lucia was talking, but I couldn't understand a word of what she was saying. I said to myself, hmm, I can see nothing there, and so neither can they. And that's how I thought. In fact, Lucia was appealing for a sign, a miracle for all to see that they were telling the truth. The Virgin Mary heard her plea. After the first apparitions, people were asking for Our Lady to create a miracle so that all may believe. In fact, the Virgin promises a miracle, which was to happen on the 13th of October of that year. Lucia's mother continued to get mad at her because she thought she was still lying. Lucia said that it was the truth and said that Our Lady was going to make a miracle that everybody would see. And her mother would say, more lies. October 13, 1917. It was a cold, rainy day. An expectant crowd of over 70,000 filled the pasture. All eyes were on the three shepherd children, waiting for them to summon a sign from God. People came here to watch the miracle and said to us, if the miracle happens and we can see it, then you speak the truth and we'll believe you. But if nothing happens, unfortunate for you, because you bring us here with a lie, and so we will beat you. By noon, no miracle had occurred, and the crowd was growing restless. Then, suddenly, the rain stopped, and Lucia cried out, Look at the sun! A local newspaper reporter vividly described what happened next. The sun looked like a plaque of dull silver, and it was possible to look at it without the least discomfort. But at that moment, a great shout went up, and one could hear the spectators nearest at hand shouting, A miracle! A miracle! The sun was whirling round and round, with intense movements and different colors, looking like it is going to fall onto people. My parish priest was there. And he said that the sun detached from the sky and came down towards him. He threw himself on the ground, convinced he was going to die. Then suddenly one heard a clamor, a cry of anguish breaking from all the people. The sun, whirling wildly, seemed all at once to loosen itself from the firmament and blood red advanced threateningly upon the earth as if to crush us with its huge and fiery weight. The sensation during those moments was truly terrible. Lucia's cousin Maria was a small child when she witnessed this event. Everyone was afraid when the sun appeared. People kneeled down and everybody asked Our Lady for forgiveness. They thought Our Lady brought them there to die. The sun then returned to its proper place in the sky. 70,000 witnesses were awestruck by a vision no one could explain. It's the only time in the history of Christianity that messages announced in advance a miracle to be worked several months later so that people could come to see it. It's a very significant thing. Everybody was completely convinced that because of this marvelous thing, the facts of the apparition must be true. The miracle of the sun sanctified the pasture's holy ground.